Hello everyone. So today I have some really important modeling tips for you. And if you're not sure how you can use transform orientations to align vertices, you need to watch this video. I'm going to start off with the basics, but this is something that many intermediate users may not be aware of. But let's start off with the simple stuff. If I wanted to align these vertices, uh, there's multiple ways I could do it. One is, this is the worst method I could do. I could copy and paste the Z value, which is, the, this is the Z axis up and down. This is the Z axis in Blender, uh, which some people complain about. But uh, if I copy and press Control Z, I can hit Control V right here, and I can start to align these vertices. That's the, not the best method. A slightly better method would be to select, hit A, select all the vertices, S to scale, Z to limit my scaling to the Z axis. If I don't do that, if I hit S, Z, if I hit S zero, uh, S0, everything becomes down to one point. Not what I want. If I hit S, now these guys were varying on the Y axis. Um, if I hit SY0, that would align them on the Y axis, but it would shift them over because it aligns them to their center point. So it, it aligns, the center point of all these lines is like right here, right? And so if I hit SY0, they get aligned. So to avoid it shifting over, I could select this, uh, move my cursor over here with Shift S, and the cursor is selected, because I've selected one point. And then if I do, with the cursor selection as my pivot point, instead of, instead of the median point, which is, is offset from the axis, if I hit SY0, now they're all aligned. I can do the exact same type of thing with this right here. I could either, well, there's two options. I'll, I'll do the first uh, median point where it, it shifts off. All of them are shifted off, right? And then if I, I can uh, either sit, say, set this Z axis to zero, or I could, um, previously I could have just, um, copied and pasted this value if it wasn't zero, which is a simple thing to put in. If it was like some specific like 1.343 and I wanted to copy and paste that, I should probably have it saved before I make the transformation, which shifts all of them. So if I hit SC zero, and then I could move them all down to right there. Or if I had like some weird value, I could paste that in and they all be, all be aligned. Now this is basic stuff and probably most of you are aware of it. And again, the cursor is another way to do it. And simple enough to hit Shift S, cursor to select it. Now, what's super important, which a lot of people don't know about, is transform orientations. So, let's say these lines of vertices were rotated, and some of these were just a little bit off. And let's say that it was like this, right? And we wanted them all to be in line with this edge, right? There's actually a fantastic way to do this, which would be way better than like. It might not be faster, but it's going to be exact. So, if you want an exact result, you can, this is how you do it. I would go to edge select mode. I would go down to in the, in the N, the properties panel to op open it with N. If you do the transform orientation, hit plus. Now we have an edge transform orientation. And what this does is pretty amazing. Let's move my cursor to this edge. And then with my edge transform orientation, if I select all these and I hit SZZ zero, that's amazing, right? If you didn't know about this, <laughs> this is gonna be life-changing. If you didn't know about it, it's not that impressive. But this also applies if you have like, in some cases, aligning vertices, if we're in orthographic mode, if I have it, um, if you're at least flat on one axis, like if you're at least flat on the Y axis, like we are right now, uh, then at least I can, you know, press one and look from the front and I have like a, a view to properly align it manually. If I did want to go ahead and start like trying to make sure these guys are lined up, right? That's one thing I could do. Now. That's going to be really hard if everything's rotated. If, if you have no, um, you know, if it's not matched on any axis or any, any axes or whatever, it's going to be a pain in the ass. So, like, let's say I mess this stuff on multiple axes. And then I go ahead and I move my cursor over here. I make another edge. Uh, and let's make sure we're in here. Make another edge transform orientation. And then if I do this and I scale it to the cursor, and then I might want to do multiple axes. So I did S, S, Z, Z, zero and SXX0. If I did SYY0, that would uh, mess it up. And how I t you can tell is that uh, Y is bringing it towards this plane. So SYY is like towards the actual original edge, right? Which is not what we're trying to do. We're trying to make it flat along the, this is the um, the X, X axis. That's the X axis specific to the edge we created, which you can tell by that red line, which is corresponds down here. So, so this is just the, like if I hit once, GX, translate, G is to translate and X is along the X, global X axis. If I hit GXX twice, now it's moving along the X axis specific to our transform orientation. Now, not only can you do those edges, but you can do it with a face. All right, so another cool thing you can do 
And I just want to, before I go any further and actually give the example, I do want to talk about face normals. If I go ahead and create a, a sphere, and in edit mode, I in the properties panel, I enable seeing the, the face normals. What this is doing is it's drawing a straight line out from the very center of the face. And so what would happen is if I selected, you know, let's say a bunch of faces, and if I scale them into transform orientation, uh, and actually let's turn on proportional editing, it kind of, it basically says use the direction of this face and scale along that axis, right? So like this is a bunch of axes or axes, sorry. Uh, and so we could, in theory, scale along each one, right? So if this one's facing this direction, if I hit S is easy zero, it scales everything nearby to that axis. And if I turn up the, the proportional editing a lot, it would like kind of align everything to that face, right? You see how it's pointed in that downward direction, right? And so you can do this with any face. So I'm again, I'm in normal orientation with uh, proportional editing on with the O key. And so if I hit S at Z zero, S Z Z, hit it twice. So S to scale, Z to to the global Z axis, and Z twice to scale on the specific Z axis to that face, and then it does that. Again, we can see that the blue line is the Z axis specific to our ob to our face. The X axis right there. So if I hit S X X zero, that's scaling everything down to the X axis of that ob that um that face, which doesn't look great, but uh, it does work. And so other useful applications of this is if we have a flat plane and we have had to have it rotated for whatever reason, you know, you might want to have it extended this direction. But if you start just moving it like this direction, you're not, it's going to be hard to keep it perfectly rectangular. So to keep it like that, what we would do is uh, look at the x-axis, this is the red line right there. So if I hit GXX, I'm moving along that axis, which is fantastic. I'm moving along the normal the axis specific to the rotation of this face, right? Very useful. And so maybe I want to you know, turn this into a cube and um, you know, turn off proportional editing. And I might want to you know, control B and bevel these, these two edges and create a semisphere. And let's say you know, I had to um, control R and create two edge loops. And uh, oh, the reason that edge loops is not working is because this is not quads. So if I go ahead and fix that, make them into some quads. And also what you're seeing right now is the uh, mesh analysis. Don't worry about that. I'll just turn that off. It's actually not. Not the point of this video is mesh analysis. Um, so, and then maybe at some point you wanted to extrude out the two sides of this. And what you realized is, okay, well actually, you know, there's some changes that you need to make that are like specific to, a good example is that let's say you have, you created some, you know, you wanted to extrude this out in a way that was aligned with the, the local axis. So I do S, Y, Y, zero or SX, SXX zero. It's not gonna work in normal orientation. So what I would have to do is go ahead and create a face orientation, which is, and then I would use this, SZZ zero, and voila, it's working. I could do the same thing over here. It doesn't have to be the same size or whatever. So S, Y, Y, zero, this is the Y axis is up and down right now. And the Z axis is left and right from our perspective right now. And I could you know, select one face and move it along the local X axis if I wanted to. Or select you know, one edge. I don't want to delete those faces, but. All right, and a final note for this video is that you guys might have interpreted when I say align vertices, you might perhaps have interpreted that, that to mean aligning some sort of mesh or object to some sort of curved surface. I do have a tutorial on that already, which is 40 minutes long and outside, you know, we don't go through all that again. So if you are interested in that type of thing or this type of thing right here on screen, I have a tutorial on how to do that. All right guys, well, thank you for watching and have a nice day.